Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be making some snack pots with a matching tray for the festive season. I'm going to be using paper in the resin to make a beautiful effect. And I'm going to be using a food safe resin called Epoxy Food, which is specially formulated to make products which will come into contact with cold food. So if all that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned and enjoy the video. First of all, I mixed up 100 millilitres of Resin Pro's transparent resin and I added some colourful white pigment also from Resin Pro. It's just enough to, to fill the outer edge of the tray and the handle. All of Resin Pro's resins should be measured by weight and I did measure it by weight but I forgot to write down how much the weight was. <laughs> but it was a full cup, one of the silicon cups, 100 millilitres um, and yeah, that filled the outer edge perfectly. I'm giving it a really good stir and I wanted the white to be really opaque because I wanted an opaque background behind the paper layer which I will do later to see if it would make a difference in how well the paper pattern would show up with an opaque background if that makes sense. So this mould is also from Resin Pro and I really do love this mould I think it's just the perfect size for doing a nice quick and easy project and it's you know you're not committing to too much if it goes wrong you haven't used that much resin so th that's why I really like it so I'm just making sure it's level and then I'll be ready to pour in my resin I decided to pour at the handle and just carry on pouring in the same place and let the resin find its way around and that way I knew I wasn't going to make a mess of it <laughs> because if I tried pouring directly into those edges I know I would have made a mess and gone to places where I didn't want to go and you get less bubbles as well if you let it find its own way you don't get trapped air pockets so yeah I, I prefer to do it that way. I decided to use this mould which makes three octagonal pots. Unfortunately, it had um, been a bit squashed and out of shape, but it actually turned out okay in the end, so that was okay. And I've cut some paper. I think it's Amy Butler scrapbooking paper and it's nice and thick. Uh, it's more like card, really. And I cut it... Um, a rectangle out. The rectangle is 4.2 centimetres high and each section for the sides is 2 centimetres wide. I made nine sections so that I had one which I could glue and stick to the other end of the paper when I glued it all together. Once those three were all prepared I was ready to start with the resin. I wanted glitter at the top of my pots and so I mixed a small amount of resin and I'm going to be using some of my white starlight glitters from Resin Pro mixed in with the resin and just poured at the bottom of the mould. I really love the starlight glitters, they're my favourite glitters and um, they have big bits and small bits in there and they're just so pretty. Uh, the only thing is though that the bottles have a stopper on the top with a little hole in so you can shake the glitter out and the hole in the stopper is smaller than the largest bits of glitter so yeah that doesn't make sense so with the glitters I always take the stoppers out so yeah I may be brand ambassador now for Resin Pro um, but I will always be honest and I'm being honest now those stoppers just are not necessary in those bottles so I poured quite a lot in because I wanted the glitter to not only look beautiful, but I wanted it to hide the top of the paper which I will be putting in. So it had two purposes. 
Right then, I was ready to pour it in. I tried to pour equal amounts into the bottom of each pot and, well, the top. You know what I mean. The bottom becomes the top. <laughs> so I tried to make sure I had equal amounts in each one and just kept trying to look from the side to check I had equal amounts. And then I was ready to pop the paper in. Once all the paper was in, I was ready to add the clear resin. I'm using epoxy food resin, which is food safe and well, food safe for cold snacks. That's the guidelines for cold snacks, not hot snacks. And so if you would like to know all the details about the food safety, you can go onto the Resin Pro website. They've got all the certification and all the information you might want to know about the food safety aspect. Um, and yeah, so I'm happy. I feel very safe using this with food for cold snacks. So as you can see, there's lots of very big bubbles coming to the top and that's all to do with the paper and the air that was trapped in there from the paper. So yeah, don't worry about that. They all come to the top and the end result was fairly clear. Okay, back to the tray and we need to add the paper. Now I've got the same paper as before. It's the Amy Butler range of paper and I do love those patterns. And what I'm going to do is kind of cover it all with the resin before I add it to the tray. I wanted to make sure the resin penetrated the paper and it didn't end up with dark patches and light patches where it hadn't, you know, soaked in properly. So I was making sure it was all soaked in and I've just laid it on a piece of silicon to protect my table and I'm rubbing it in on both sides. I'm using the Resin Pro Transparent Resin again for this one because I'm not planning on putting any food on the tray. It's going in the pots. Um, so yeah, I wasn't worried about making this food safe. If you wanted to make it food safe, that's fine. Use the Epoxy Food Resin. The only thing I will say is if you're you trying to make something food safe the pigment that you put into the resin also needs to be food safe otherwise the item you make won't be classed as food safe that's why in the pots that I made I kept the resin clear and just used paper to decorate them um, and so if you were doing this tray for food and you wanted it to be food safe, you do need to be careful about the pigment. I would suggest using glitter to colour it or, um, you know, stones or something that's not going to alter the food safety of the resin. Anyway, what I'm doing here is just adding some clear resin before I add the paper. I was trying not to make it go to the edges because I didn't want a clear line around the edge of my board, but that didn't quite work and I, I did end up with a clear line around the edge of the board. But the idea was I didn't want it to reach the mould. But things don't always work to plan, do they? Now I'm just getting rid of the bubbles with my heat gun. I am being careful. I'm always careful using heat when I'm using moulds because you can get really damage the mould if it gets too hot. So all the bubbles are gone and we're ready to place the paper into the mould. Try to layer your paper slowly and Try to do it in, in a smooth way so that you're not trapping air. So if you just look at the way I'm doing it, doing it really slowly and smoothly and try not to trap any air in there. because You don't want air pockets trapped. And then once it was in, I did spend quite a long time just gently patting it all over with my fingers and trying to feel to see if there was any unevenness to it. Because if there's a big pocket of air in there, when you smooth it over with your finger, you'll feel it and you'll start to see bubbles coming out. So I did spend a long time on that. It's quite important to do that. Right, the next day it was all cured and we were ready for the final layer. And I've just mixed the Resin Pro Transparent just like before with the white colourful pigment. 
and just pour, simply pouring it on. It's as easy as that. Okay, it's the next day and it's cured. Let's see how it turned out. My main worry was that there was air pockets caught between the paper and the outer resin layer. Uh, yeah, I was worried about that, but let's see. And there we have it, no air pockets. And you can see how having the opaque whites behind the paper has helped that paper to really stay, you know, the crisp. The pattern is still very visible. However, let's let's take the pots out with the clear resin and you can see the difference in a second. There we go. You can see how with the clear resin, it's a much more subtle effect. The pattern's there, but it's not as apparent as it is with the opaque pigment behind it so yeah i, I like the results um yeah they're just not what i was expecting i knew the paper would change once it was in resin um but yeah i, I wasn't quite expecting it to look quite like that anyway you can see here that it's still really pretty and you can see the pattern on the paper. And I think it makes just a perfect little set for putting your dips in. If you sat watching TV and it's just for one person, it's perfect. I really love the end result. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So that's it for today. It was just a short and sweet one, but hopefully it's inspired you. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you did. It would really help me. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.